I'm going to talk through and explain some of the settings when exporting in Premiere Pro. When you first finish your video, you need to export and you get this menu. The first thing we're going to look at is match source. This automatically adjusts the basic setting to match the things in the timeline, not the source footage though, only the settings chosen for the sequence. Now we're going to look at width and height. This is very self-explanatory, it just means that you can change the size of the video for the platform you're using. Next is frame rate. This is the number of frames per second. Common choices for this are 60, 30 or 24. Lower frame rate makes smoother motions in the footage. Okay, in field order you get two options, progressive and interlaced. Progressive scanning is when all 1080 vertical lines of data are shown at the same time in a frame. Interlaced scanning is when half is shown, then the other half is shown often in odds and then evens. The aspect setting allows you to change the shape of the pixels. So if you're using, making a video for YouTube, you often use square pixels. This basically just means that the image stretches one way or the other to show correctly depending on the format that you're using. With TV standard, there are two options, NTSC and PAL. NTSC is the standard for SD TV broadcast in the US, Japan, and a few other countries. PAL is the one we need. Now, profile. In H.264, we can choose from baseline, main, and high. Baseline is used more for live streams and faster broadcasting. Main is standard. High is for HD broadcast. Main is more than enough for what we need. Level is similar to profile. It's codec specific settings which define the samples used, in, used to encode. The higher le the level, the more the encoding time increases, but it doesn't affect video quality. Match source data is the best setting for this. Render maximum depth is often only needed when creating more advanced 32-bit effects, so we don't really worry about this one. Bitrate settings can be quite complicated. Here we get two options, VBR one pass and VBR two pass. The one pass is default, basically means that the video is reviewed and considered once before output. VBR two pass is the better option as the video gets double checked, although it does take longer to encode. A target bitrate means the more data you try to process, the higher bitrate needed. This is usually best set around 20 to 22. Maximum bitrate. Higher maximum bitrates are needed for fa fast motion and transitions. A higher maximum bitrate means that the encoder can adjust bitrate when needed without affecting video quality in the areas that don't need it. The keyframe distance means the spacing between the full frame of video used for compression. This is better when lower. The more keyframes you need, the larger the file. Use maximum render quality. This increases the quality when scanning footage. It's easier to just keep this checked for the best output. Using previews. If you have rendered previews of your timeline while editing, checking this box uses those previews for the export and can speed up render times. But this is all down to personal preference, so it's not important. Time interpolation changes how the encoder guesses at changes when using different frame rates. If your footage is less frames per second than your timeline, the missing frames have to be created from somewhere. This setting decides how this happens. 